Hey everybody, I'm Steve Schwartz. Um, it's great to be with you here in person. I actually do most stuff online, which is why I'm recording this. I run an LSAT prep website called, quite literally, the LSAT blog. I also have an LSAT-focused YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LSAT blog. So what I do is I offer free and low-cost LSAT preparation materials. And have any of you uh, looked into the LSAT or any of you considering law school? All right, awesome. Yeah, so the LSAT is the law school admission test. It's the main exam used for law school admissions. A couple of schools are starting to take the GRE, but the LSAT is pretty much still the only game in town. But that's good and bad. It's good because the LSAT is the best indicator of how you'll do in law school, which actually leads me to the controversial opinion that if your LSAT score is too low, then it may not be worth going to law school. That's because law school is a $300,000 gamble. And you might think, well, how is law school that expensive? Well, law school tuition is maybe $40,000 a year on average times three years. That's one twenty. But three years of being in law school and not earning money adds up as well. So that's another maybe $60,000 a year that gives you $180,000 plus the one twenty for tuition ends up at $300,000. And so you think, I don't want to take on all of that debt. How do I avoid the law school debt? You avoid the debt by getting a good LSAT score. Law schools care about two ma major things, your LSAT score and your GPA. There's other factors like the personal statement, letters of recommendation and whatnot, but like it or not, numbers determine the majority of it because law schools are ranked in the US news rankings. And I don't know why they care so much about the US news rankings because nobody really cares about US news for any other purpose on earth. But law schools care, law school admission officers care, and so you need to care as well. If you can get an LSAT score that is above the median or even the average of the law school you want to go to, then they will give you scholarship money. They will give you merit aid, maybe 10,000 a year, maybe 20,000 a year, maybe a full ride. And so if you can get a full ride to law school, you can reduce the debt you take on significantly to only be maybe your living expenses, and then you'll have many more options available to you when you finish law school. Maybe you're interested in public interest law or immigration law, but you have all that debt when you graduate, you might end up considering that corporate law job instead, even if that's not what your idealistic dreams were three years prior. So you might be asking now, well, what is the LSAT? How do I do well on it? The LSAT is an exam that's about three and a half hours long. It used to be offered only four times a year, but now it's actually offered as many as nine or even ten times a year going forward, in part due to increased competition with the GRE. You could take the GRE, maybe, but law schools are mostly considering that for people who have STEM, meaning like science, te technology, math backgrounds. If you're a humanities person, you're a pre-law person, the LSAT's going to be your option. Now, what's on the LSAT? The LSAT has three sections. It has logic games, which are like puzzles. They're like short, logical, mathematical sorts of puzzles. They're pretty scary at first, but they're actually quite learnable in the end. Then there's logical reasoning. This is half the exam. And these are short arguments. Sorry for my terrible handwriting here. These are short, bite-sized arguments containing evidence and conclusion. They're short paragraphs. You might be asked to strengthen an argument or weaken an argument or identify the main point or primary purpose of an argument. There is a free exam on LSAC's website. LSAC is the Law School Admission Council. If you go on there or you just Google June 2007 LSAT, you'll find a free LSAT practice test you can download and try out. Now, I wouldn't take the results of that diagnostic test as meaning anything at all, because chances are, you do it cold, you probably won't do very well. That's okay, I didn't do very well either my first time, the exam is learnable. And these two sections, logic games and logical reasoning, those are the harder parts of the exam, so you might do worse on them at first, but they are learnable. Then finally, and I'll write this over here, there's reading comprehension. This is very similar in appearance to what you see on the SAT or the ACT or the GRE. 
but it's actually looking for something very different. It's not looking for content. A lot of times in like English class or the SAT, you're asked to identify the tone, the topic, the conclusion of a passage. On the LSAT, they're looking for something different. They're looking for the argumentative structure. They want to see if you're able to track the major viewpoints being presented in the passage as the author goes about making their argument and presenting different viewpoints. Now, the LSAT has one section of games, two sections of logical reasoning, and one section of reading comp. So there's four sections altogether, just three different types of sections. Games, reasoning, reading comp. Reading comp, I wouldn't start there because you'll do okay. I'd start with games. You start with the games. They're scary at first, like I said, but they're very learnable. And you can go on YouTube, my YouTube channel at the LSAT blog. There's other YouTube channels also where people actually do full detailed walkthroughs of every single logic game ever released. And you might think, well, where can I get the other logic games? I referenced the June 2007 LSAT. That's the free one online on LSAC's website. But there are many, many other LSAT exams available to you. There are actually 86 numbered released LSAT exams and then a handful more that are not numbered. You can buy most of them in books of 10 exams on Amazon for about $20 each. This is the best prep material you can possibly use because these are real released previous exams. There's no need to go to fake LSAT problems. A lot of books like Barron's and Kaplan Princeton Review, their retail books and bookstores use fake or simulated questions because they don't want to pay the licensing fee to LSAC, the people who make the test. But you need to use the real ones because they're more reliable. The fake ones contain mistakes, and the LSAT's hard enough as it is. It's even worse when you do a practice test only to find that the mistake was not with you, but with the people writing the questions. Real released exams are in books of prep tests. Practice tests are called prep tests. If a book does not tell you the date and year it was administered, if they don't tell you the prep test number, then it's probably not a real practice test. Right now, we are at prep test 86. This was the November 2018 <clears throat> exam, just to give you a sense of where we're coming from here. The LSAT had its modern formulation in June 1991 with LSAT exam number one, and since then they've been releasing three a year pretty much on schedule, which is how we get to 86, exams about almost 30 years later, believe it or not. I wasn't around back in 91. I was like six years old. So I didn't do that one. But when I was studying, I was doing the exams in the 40s. So when I started my prep journey, I started about a 152. And that was in 2005. And how I got there, took a 152 with like exam 45, I think. And then I was pretty discouraged because I went to a good undergrad. I had a good GPA. I thought I was going to go to a top 14 law school then I end up with a 152. 152 is not going to get you into a top 14 law school. You really need to have, for one of those schools, you need maybe a 165 or a 170 or above, depending on your GPA. A 170 is the 97th percentile, and a 151 is the 50th percentile. So 152, it'll get you into like a decent, maybe a third tier law school, but it's not going to get you significant scholarship money. And so what I did was, over the course of an entire year, I did every released LSAT up to that point. I did over 40 exams, and I looked at every mistake I made, every question I had difficulty with, and it was through the detailed review process that I came to learn the exam and, and master it over that period of time. It's not necessarily going to take you a year. I would say maybe three months is a good minimum amount of time to spend. One month is not enough. Two months is not enough. It's worth investing at least three to six months, given how important this exam is. Think about it. You know, your undergrad GPA took you maybe three or four years to get. Your LSAT score is going to be more important than that, but you earn it in less time.